Uh, my understanding is that Afghanistan, uh, we've we're nearly got it fixed. Okay, just another ten years or so, and another trillion dollars or so, and we have nailed it. Right now, uh, putting the kidney aside, Brave New Films has put together another great video uh, on how long this war is. It is, of course, literally the longest war we've ever had. So let's watch that video first, then we're going to talk to Robert Greenwald from Brave New Films. Here you go. On June 7th, the U.S. troops will be in Afghanistan for 104 months, more than eight and a half years. The longest U.S. war surpassing Vietnam. It is the longest war in American history, and it is a war for which there is no end in sight. I think of this war as Vietnamistan. It's essentially the same sort of war from our point of view, fighting people who are mainly motivated by the determination to expel foreign invaders from their country. If one of the lessons of Vietnam is that uh, counterinsurgency in support of an unpopular government just won't work, I think you can apply the same lesson to Afghanistan. We have an escalating stalemate there and will have so long as we're associated with a government that's seen as the puppet of foreigners. Karzai is uh, no more, no less corrupt, probably, than the leaders that we, the puppets, basically, that we supported in Vietnam. The idea that uh, you can defeat nationalism uh, or defeat an entirely different culture by military force is a crazy idea, a completely crazy idea that stems from um, superpower arrogance. I don't see any end in sight actually with the course that President Obama has launched us on. He has not promised or pledged exactly how many he promises to take out or leave behind, so it's very ambiguous. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if we're in this region for the foreseeable future, and by that I mean the next 10, 15 years. In the Vietnam War as now, it seems to be extremely difficult for presidents to admit that uh, policy is failing and we have to chart a fundamentally a different course. I see no year in the future in which a president will be willing to take the responsibility and face the charges of weakness and uh, irresolution uh, that will be involved in ending that requirement. So it's not necessarily clear to me and to many people uh, why we must remain in countries of very little value and uh, when that actually weakens us economically and militarily and politically. It's a um, hopeless, indefinitely prolongable um, stalemate, bloody stalemate, in which uh, blood seeps into the ground of Afghanistan like the oil gushing into the Gulf beneath the surface of American consciousness uh, can go on indefinitely until and finally uh, Congress does what it did in Vietnam, which was the only way that war could be ended. And that was pressed by popular desire to see the war over and the gushing of money and lives ended. Congress cut off the the well cut off the the gusher of money year after year in vietnam each american president concluded this is a bad year for me to lose in vietnam and it was never a good year all right well there you have it uh now with us uh the head of brave new films and of course they've built rethink afghanistan.com uh robert greenwald robert welcome back to the young turks Thank you. It's great to be back with you. All right. Great to have you here. So l let's uh, first talk about how do we get this done, right? S we've got a lot of people agreeing, article out today as well, saying, hey, you know what, people in Washington, congressmen, generals even uh, in the field, everybody's concerned that Afghanistan is not going well. But it doesn't seem like anybody's got the political will to actually say it's not going well and I'm cutting the funding, that's it, the war is over. So how do we get that done? 
Well, I think the way we get that done is the way we've got every battle done, Cenk, and it's you and your audience and audiences around the country who say we're mad as hell. And as Bob Herbert said in a wonderful column the other day, it takes courage to end a war. It doesn't take courage to keep a, keep a, a senseless war going, thousands and thousands of deaths, billions of dollars, and there's not one person in this world who is any safer because of this war. Well, uh, so now Obama said we're going to withdraw by July 2011, or we're going to begin the withdrawal from Afghanistan at that point. Uh, given how the generals are pushing to stay longer instantly, of course, as soon as they gave the place to Obama that they would get out by then, then they started the campaign to stay longer. What do you think? Are we going to hit that target, and is that target good enough? Well, I think that uh, what we've seen is what you accurately described. The generals have boxed Obama into a corner. They've pressured for more troops, as Alan Grayson said at Rethink Afghanistan. Asking the generals if they want how many troops they want is like asking his five-year-olds how much candy they want. And it's an absolutely accurate analogy. But I think we all have a job to do, and we really have a chance on this one. Our Rethink Afghanistan Facebook page, there are 35,000 people who are passionately committed to telling all of their friends about the many reasons we have to get out and the pressure we have to create. If we don't have pressure on the elected officials, then we can only blame ourselves. And I will tell you, in talking to senators and talking to House members, uh, most of them are unhappy with the war. They're not fully informed. But over and over again, they've said to us, we're not hearing from our constituents enough. So I would urge everyone who's uh, watching the show, listening to the show, to try to get involved with us on the Facebook page. It's all about activism, and it's all about creating pressure. I, I, the other thing we got to do, though, Robert, is change the conversation. Because as Daniel Ellsberg said in that video, and as we've seen over and over again, if you talk about withdrawal after you've started any war, it doesn't matter how disastrous it is, like the Iraq war, the minute you talk about withdrawal, they say, oh, no, that's it, you're weak. And as long as politicians are considered weak for withdrawing from a war, then we've got such a bigger uphill battle to climb. So how do we change that, that perception, that framing? Well, I think there's a couple of ways. The first thing is to declare victory. Al-Qaeda, according to General Petraeus, is no longer in Afghanistan. He's gone. They're gone. We won, we beat them, and they're out of there. So, I mean, a truly and accurately, we can state, the, if the goal is to get rid of a certain number of terrorists, we have done that, number one. And the second is to take an offensive position about the problems of Afghanistan, and most significantly from a, a, a partisan pol political point of view, about the politics of what we do about security. And there's lots you can do aggressively about security, which can be combined with getting the troops out of there, because people are increasingly upset about the cost of the war, the recent survey out, a, a strong percentage believe that the war is not worth what it's costing us. And that's one of the points you and I have talked about. We've been hammering it at Rethink Afghanistan, the billions and billions of dollars. And damn it, there's never enough money for jobs. There's never enough money for health care. There's never enough money to save people's homes. But for every lousy weapon that is unusable, there's always plenty of money. So, R Robert, whenever we have these conversations, I always worry about, you know, the people of Afghanistan and worry about leaving. For example, we're having trouble in the Marja district. That was supposed to be a showcase. Uh, McChrystal was supposed to go in there and knock that off the board and go, ha ha, look at how good we are. Now let's go to Kandahar. Except it didn't turn out that way. It turns out we got bogged down in, in Marja already, and that was supposed to be easy. But part of the problem is that the Taliban, you know, they not only are they strong, but I'm afraid so we pull out, then they're going to just take Marja, they're going to keep Kandahar, and they're loathsome. So, how about the promises we made to the Afghani people? How do we, you know, bring that to a resolution? What happens to them? Well, the promises that we've made are not being met by a military invasion and occupation that the people of Afghanistan are opposed to. I was in Afghanistan. I spent time there. You talk to virtually anybody in, I was in Kabul. The security did not allow me to go outside Kabul. But anybody in Kabul, was strongly opposed to the Taliban, and they were as strongly opposed to the occupation of their country. There is so much that could be done, but it's not, these problems cannot be solved by military. It could be solved by teachers, by uh, jobs, by economic training, human rights, all kinds of things. 
What we're doing, though, let's make no mistake about it, we are intervening in a civil war between the Taliban and some of the warlords. It is not the good guys against the bad guys. It's two horrible choices at the moment. We have video of thousands of people fleeing Marja because they're terrified of the foreign forces, the civilian casualties over and over and over again. And the partners that Karzai had, the warlords, are despicable and treat the women of Afghanistan and the people of Afghanistan as badly or worse in some areas of the country. So I don't mean to fully depress everyone, but we need to be clear, it's not uh, good guys versus bad guys here. And we've made a decision for reasons that are very, very hard to fathom when you really think about it, to intervene in a civil war. But this is a classic case. If we were not in that war, do you think anybody in his right mind would be saying, let's send 100,000 troops to Afghanistan and start a war over there? We're in the war because <laughs> we're in the war, and therefore we're going to keep it going. That's a brilliant point. I mean, because... Since al-Qaeda is not in Afghanistan anymore, if we weren't in it right now, no one in their right mind would say send 100,000 troops to Afghanistan now. And, and, and let's spend billions of dollars a month. I mean, can you imagine what you would do to somebody like that who got up in the House or Senate and said, here are the troops, here are the contractors, here are the billions of dollars, let's go to war. With the, with the third poorest country in the world for reasons we can't really articulate, but we want to do it. It, because if you wanted to use that rationale, you can go to war with Somalia or Yemen right now. <laughs> so, yes. That, yes. So, I, although I don't want to give them ideas. Um, exactly. All right. One last thing for you, Robert. Is there a way to, and this is a little controversial, but is there a way to pull in the Republicans because they're so re ready to oppose Obama for any reasons? Yeah, they were on the opposite side before, but they don't care about that. Is there a way to bring them in to say, hey, you know what, maybe you could oppose Obama by pulling out of Afghanistan? Well, I have been talking to some Republicans, primarily libertarians or the conservatives whose ideology is really a kind of isolationist ideology. They don't believe we should be intervening militarily in almost any place that doesn't truly affect national security. So I think there is an opportunity. As you know, uh, Ron Paul is very strongly against the war. He and Alan Grayson uh, introduced the bill together. We hope to be doing more work with them. And I think there are opportunities there. The Democrats are increasingly uh, large and large numbers are against it. And as a friend of mine emailed me the other day, if, he said, if Obama does not get us out of Afghanistan, he's a one-term president. And I really think it's that profound, it's that corrosive, and it's going to have that negative effect. So we can all, wherever you are in terms of your Obama-ness, I think we all do him and his presidency an enormous favor by actively forcing the issue on this horrible war. Uh, the final uh, thing that I liked in this interview, that I got out of this interview, is the new word, Obamanus. I like that. I'm going to use that from now on. <laughs> okay. It's all yours. <laughs> okay. Robert Greenwald from Brave New Films, bravenewfilms.org, rethinkafghanistan.com, and the Facebook page, Rethink Afghanistan. Thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. My pleasure.